You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rosnack. The University of Manitoba Symphony Orchestra is inviting audiences to explore Beyond the Woods. Their upcoming concert features two works by renowned composers paired alongside a new orchestral voice. And to hear more about those works, I'm joined by UMSO Music Director Monica Chen, student composer Mang Hang Yu, and soloist Paulo Camus. Good morning to you all. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Uh, Mang Hang, I, I'd like to begin um, by chatting with you a, a little bit about your work, mm-hmm. Sen. What does the word mean, and, and how does it appear in your composition? So, Sen is actually a Chinese word, which um, is illustrating the atmosphere of a forest. And I was uh, in like uh, wanting to show the kind of the uh, deep end of forest, like the unknown mystery and the, like the sounds or the good things happening in the forest as well. So it's kind of, um, yeah, just an atmosphere of a forest. So Sen means forest, right? Kind of. Kind of, but more the, yeah. guy, more the feeling you get once you're in a forest, right? Yes, kind of. So uh, then I'm curious, how, how do you depict that in your music? Or, or, or do you kind of use that depiction? I was reading more about this composition of yours, and it, it utilizes set theory. And it's been a while since I took any theory <laughs> classes. So can you remind me what that is and, and how it appears in the music? Yeah, so normally we only take like few pictures from like 12 tones for set theory. But this work was based on the like the interval between of them. Like it's about mi- minor and major. Like the minor was about to ma- to illustrate the mystery, and the major was about to illustrate the like the good things and like happiness happening. The so the then, rest. so then, set theory. Like, if I remember correctly, it sort of like explores that relationship, right? Yes. And assigning notes. And if yes. any of you want to jump in and correct my set theory knowledge, you're welcome <laughs> to do so at any time. Because, like I said, it's been a long time since I did this stuff. But yeah, that I sort know. of categorization of the individual pitches. So, yes. h- how would you characterize the the kind of final result? What 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 is the final soundscape like? It's like um, so we have different kind of movements. So for those minor movements, they're just like we. O- I only use kind of minors like minor sevens or se- six or a third mostly, and so to show the misery and o- also the dangers of in the forest. But the majors was only like major third mostly and major six or sevens mostly. So it was like kind of that thing. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. exploring those intervals and, and then those relationships yeah. between those pitches. Um, Monica, um, what's it been like working with Wang Hang on, on this composition and, and putting it together? It's really uh, interesting for for both myself and the composer and the orchestra because it's not often that you get to work on like a world premiere. And then often with the world premieres as we do, it's often a changing work, right? As we're rehearsing, sometimes we notice some things that might have sounded better like in the head mm-hmm. or like on the computer and then when you actually actually hear what the instruments can actually do then you just adjust and that's just the great thing about new compositions is how everything can change live with the actual composer to really fit the idea that they have well this is exactly what i wanted to ask next is has this work been played before but i think you've answered that question this is a world oh, premiere no. oh mong hang is saying no uh, has no. it been played before no. How are you feeling about a world premiere happening tomorrow? Um, I think it's going to be wonderful because we had a rehearsal yesterday. That was perfect. So I think it'll be perfect tomorrow um, as well. Like you were saying, Monica, I mean, this is just one of those works where you get to turn to the composer and adapt and change and kind of offer that feedback because it, it might make sense on the computer, but then idiomatically, once you're playing it or hearing it, it, it changes a little bit. And, and that has to be a, a pretty thrilling prospect for you as a, a music director and a conductor, right? Working so closely with the composer. Yeah, for me, I think of myself as just I am I am in service of the composer and of the soloist, right? I try to interpret uh, what is on the page. I'm the conduit between what the orchestra understands and what they understand as well. So I'm just kind of the messenger, the interpreter in between to try and get everyone. I'm the to get everyone what they want on both sides of the coin. You get to fil- facilitate that conversation with Mong mm-hmm. Hang, but you don't necessarily get to turn to, you know, Rafe Williams or Peter Ilyich yes. Tchaikovsky and ask them what they would want to do. Yeah. Uh, the other two composers on the program, how did you go about putting this this whole program together, Beyond the Woods? So this program, the Vaughn Williams, is the one that caught my attention first. And this 
Uh, he wrote this when he was 26 years old, and this is his very first orchestral composition. And for for Ray Fawn Williams, when you hear him and you know of his work, this is very close to that of what he eventually matured into, but it's really interesting to see how he started. And for his first orchestral work, it's really quite stunning, and almost no one has heard of it. In fact, every conductor that I've spoken to about this piece, no one even knew of its existence. So I thought it was a really exciting challenge for the winds. There's so many solos in this one, especially I kind of gave them a little bit of a break until this point. They've, they're they really shining in this piece. And then to pair it along with Paolo's uh, Tchaikovsky and also Mong Han's uh, Sen. Uh, Paulo, you've been hanging out uh, here in the studio this whole time. Um, you're tackling one of the most popular works in the repertoire, the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. How are you feeling about playing this, this war horse in the literature? Well, of course I'm very excited, but I've been playing it for over a year now. and I had uh, played it at last year's university uh, concerto competition. So, uh, But it was only the first movement, so getting to play the whole thing is very exciting. It's a lot to take in. Um, to play, but I hope it'll be very fun. I think it's been fun for the orchestra. I think I hope it's been fun for Monica. Um, but yes, it has been a lot of fun, and I've been learning a lot. You're currently in your third year, is that, is that right? Yes. Studying yes. with Oleg Pokonovsky? Yes. Um, t- tell us a little bit about where you're at in your studies, and I mean, this is obviously a work that you've been living with for a, a little while now, like you say, performing mm-hmm. it in the concerto competition, one which went rather well, uh, right, if, if yes. I remember correctly? Yeah, yes. yeah, I think you yes. did pretty well in that one. So h- h- how does it feel to, to be able to play the, the, the full work now and, and working with Oleg on, on putting this all together? Um, I've been working with Oleg a lot. He's been, uh, he's been a great teacher for this piece because he is Russian, so he knows the ins and outs. Um, he's... Every lesson we've broken down very small parts of it just mm. to like cement each um, each passage. And I've also um, taken lessons with other teachers as well, um, in the city and out of country as well. Um, I study privately online with uh, my teacher in the Philippines, Jeffrey Solares. Um, and just recently I had a lesson with Carl Stobie and Getting to l- learn a lot from these professionals is quite amazing and like how they analyze and how they how they see the piece itself and how to perform it and convey what I want to the audience. Do you also kind of take bits and pieces from each of them and then make it your own? Do you kind of synthesize those thoughts or is it really just kind of working movement by movement with, I don't know, perhaps a little bit with Solatis, um, your, you know, online teacher in, based in, in Manila, um, or, or like a little bit from Oleg or a little bit from Carl, or do you kind of just take little bits from each of them and, and then make it your own? Um, I mostly take from Oleg because he's my main teacher, yeah, yeah. and then I have um, uh, Mr. Solaris supporting that. And then I have Carl weighing in and bringing new ideas to the table. So uh, well, I want to chat more about this um, this sort of relationship that mm-hmm. you have because it was one that caught my attention when I was reading through your bio. I mean, in addition to performing as part of school events, um, you're actively involved in the Filipino community. You mentioned those uh, online lessons. I don't imagine you're flying to you know Manila every week or something like that. I wish. Because, yeah, that would exactly, be great. Exactly. <laughs> but, but can you talk more about the importance of, of music in your life? Because it seems to be somewhat all-encompassing. Is, is that fair to say? So um, it started in... I started in the Philippines when I was uh, a wee little lad. Um, I was forced to play it. <laughs> um, it was either swimming or violin, and I hated swimming at the time. I love swimming now, but I hated it at the time, so I, I forced myself, or I was forced into playing violin. Um, since then, I've just been playing a lot in church mostly. That's where I learned how to do a lot of improv, yeah. and that helped me to um, get into my gigs with um, local uh, musicians and it's been a lot of fun being able to explore that side of music as well, like doing gigs, small time, um, also some big time stuff, um, and then getting to perform with the WSO with the Musica Singers. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, that's a great opportunity to have. Uh, so many opportunities here in the city, and it's certainly um, 
you're making the most of them. And so thrilled at this opportunity for you to perform alongside the UMSO. Uh, Monica, this wraps up your first season as, as music director of, of the UMSO. Is it, this is the last concert, it right? It is. Yeah, this uh, is the last Has it flown one. by for you? I mean, here we are. We're, we're post. I hope we're done. Are we done recitals and uh, and juries and all of that stuff? Or are those still to come? <laughs> uh, still to come. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. But uh, first, got to get through this concert. I remember the joys of that. Uh, Monica, I mean, as I was saying, uh, this wraps up the season for you as, as music director. How would you characterize this year? I would say it was unexpected in one word, mainly because when I first came in to the orchestra, many people had come to talk to me about how I can help the orchestra and how to shape them, how to continue the journey that they've been on. But it's when I first came down in the first rehearsal, I was immediately, um, I could see immediately how the students were so ready to make music and mm. so ready to learn. And this has been a long year for them because I've definitely worked them very, very hard. I've given them challenging rep, um, but I hope that they really enjoyed the pieces along the way. And I really feel that they've grown a lot as an ensemble since September, and I'm very proud of them. Uh, does it feel like you've grown too through that span? Oh, for sure. That's definitely, <laughs> that's definitely for sure. And especially going forward into next year, I already have some plans into what repertoire we could explore and how we can help. Because it's such a small orchestra, but how to choose the right repertoire to really help them flourish. Well, so excited to see what you do next. In the meantime, you'll have a concert coming up tomorrow, Beyond the Woods, uh, 7.30 p.m. at Westworth United Church. Uh, tickets are just $20, $15 for seniors, $5 for students with a valid ID. It should be a great one. Thank you all for joining me this morning. Wonderful to have you here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us.